All right, greetings once again. Here's a brief uh, clip. I'll call this, we'll call this the Satanist interview, which reveals the, um, the, the Satanist agenda. I mean, this is, this is real. This is really serious. This is, this is real world. This is not an a exercise. And to prove it, this is a historical um, clip off of some um, local, perhaps some local news channel or public, you know, affairs, you know, one of these kind of channels and everything like that. But somebody must have saved it and put it out there on the Internet and um, we caught this clip. This clip is from a video series called uh, The Industry. The Industry, I think about 16 or so hours. And this is from one of the videos right here. And this is the last clip um, on this particular disc here. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewind this. Let's rewind this and play the clip um, in toto, in the words, completely let's just play the clip completely then we'll go through and make a couple of um references to what we think are some key areas that are revealed in this there's a lot of moving parts but let's first get an overview of this so let's um back this up okay let's go to the next clip Um. Anton LaVey is a recluse who grants no interviews and makes no public pronouncements. The affairs of the Church of Satan are, are overseen by two people, his daughter, Zena LaVey, and Mr. Nicholas Shrek, founder of the Werewolf Order of Satanism. Zena LaVey and Nicholas Shrek are the chief spokespersons for the Church of Satan, and they are the two people you will see me confront during this video. Whether or not you believe in a literal devil, you should be concerned about the plans of LeVay and Shrek to establish a satanically ruled society. This interview was not a debate with my countering the viewpoint put forth by the Church of Satan. The purpose of this video was to divulge information regarding the agenda of the Church of Satan, facts that until now have been cloaked in rumor and contradiction. Jane Mansfield. Was Jane Mansfield a follower and or a lover of your father? Yes, she was a member of the Church of Satan. I will not discuss my father's private life because I don't think it's anybody's business. <laughs> Well, because of the recent hysteria we've seen, I'm not going to put their 
there's a there are people in every field of endeavor in architecture. Well, well, so you, 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 you blame it on hysteria, but in fact, uh, if, if they're a follower of Satan, uh, should they not be willing to step forward and say so? I mean, well, that's what we're embarking on now. Well, what the Nazis are going to see is a massive rise of Satanism. People are going to come out of the shadows and reveal themselves as thoroughgoing Satanists. Because what we're seeing now is the death struggle between the Judeo-Christian idea and archetype and the more ancient satanic archetype. We feel that the best way to change the world into a satanic arena is by having strong individuals in different areas do their own individual work. So by joining the Church of Satan, you enter into the possibility of going into the higher echelons of the Church of Satan. But if you join a Christian, what's been happening to Nicholas Rex since the last time we met? Well, we're entering phase two of Radio Werewolf Software's and the World Dominion. And what we're waging is a cultural war right now on every front in music, in literature, utilizing the media against itself. Uh, what we're trying to do is bring back a resurgence of the Western European tradition that has been all but lost in the world. And we're using music because that's the, that's the instrument that young people respond to right now. We're doing propaganda directly to awaken the wolf in man because the wolf is a symbol of Western European power and fury, and that's why we use the werewolf imagery. I understand you're talking about the evolution of this, but uh, your music is getting more into the... Well, yeah, on the armies, well, I wouldn't say political, because we transcend politics. Politics is only the puppet show of human beings, and we transcend that. But we are interested in the control of human beings for our own purposes. Music of today is absolute slow. It's designed to keep young people passive, restrained, and it's designed to tame them and keep them into a sort of domestic sheep. I would separate young people today into two breeds. There's predators, which are the wolves, and they're the sheep, and that's most of them. And we appeal to an elite. We are, frankly, an elitist organization. We seek a few excellent people. We don't want a lot of dross. We don't want a lot of mediocre followers that we wanted people who are capable of action. Do you see uh, a, a lot of, uh, do you see some elements of what you're talking about in other music? I think the Skinner movement is a very positive step away from the decadence of the rock and drug culture that has dominated the youth so much. But as Adolf Hitler said, we seek to bring about a youth that has closed its heart to pity. All of the humanist values that Judeo-Christianity has encouraged we want to work them out. It's led to democracy, social humanism, the idea of equality. All of this self has to be wiped out if the human race is going to continue to take the next step in evolution. What do you believe that that would be like in that, uh, if you were in, in control? Just not be right to square your own people. Well, we are in control because basically we are not a political organization. We are an occult organization. We are working behind the scenes to manipulate the way that people think. The war that we are waging is a guerrilla war on the human mind. And we use musical frequencies, the dominant frequency, which I've referred to before, and symbolism and imagery to awaken dormant aspects of the human mind. The war that we are waging is a guerrilla war on the human mind. And we use musical frequencies, the dominant frequency, which I've referred to before, and symbolism and imagery to awaken dormant aspects of the human mind. The Church of Satan has chosen Satan as its primary symbol because in Hebrew it means adversary, opposer, one to accuse or question. And we see ourselves as being the Satans, the adversaries, opposers, and accusers of all spiritual belief systems that would try to hamper enjoyment of our life as a human being. So 
founded in San Francisco, California by Anton LaVey in 1966. The Church of Satan sees belief in God or hell as delusional, and so they choose to practice self-reliance and self-worship. This is a very selfish religion. We believe in greed, we believe in selfishness, we believe in all of the, the lustful thoughts that motivate man because this is man's natural uh, feeling. If you're going to be a sinner, be the best sinner on the block. You're going to do something that's uh, naughty, do it. And realize that you're doing something naughty, you'll enjoy it. Did you realize how pitiful that is, what you just asked me? Let us everywhere you go, the temperature is 75 degrees. Everything is the same. All the people are exactly the same. Now, what kind of life is that? Well, let us around where well, you want to go back. It's just not too late to change it. Sure, <laughs> sure, you have to. Well, there's never any more disease, there's no more poverty. Everybody's out of a job. That's right. Every time we have the argument, you say the same thing to me, you give me the same three answers all the time, the same thing, well, everybody has a job, that's all it's the last one. But you know what else? There's no more, my friend, there's no more beauty. And there's no more imagination. And there's no frontiers left to conquer. You know why? Only one reason why. One reason why the same attitude that you three guys are giving me right here in this room today. And that is, nobody cares. Yeah. So I bring it to the stage, my man from Yonkers, New York. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the All right. Let's see if we can. Uh, let's see if we can get it back. So. I bring it to the stage, my man from Yonkers, New York. Now, D has some important things to say here, and we give thanks for the stance that DMX has been taking against this whole conspiracy and the grace of the grace of Jah, the grace of God that is moving in his life, and we pray that it continues and that he too be one of the overcomers because he has, you know, seen the truth and is speaking out against, you know, the, the, the evil and the evil doers and even repenting of, of his own involvement, you know. So, so you ever have to check out this vid and you can order it from www, from our website. We put all these vids together and everything and it's available. But let's focus on this particular um, subject matter right here because like we said, there's a, there's a couple of points that we can you know, and should be addressed because um, this should be an eye-opener, this particular um, 59th part of the industry where they, as they say, um, hear it from the so-called horse's mouth. If it's any horse, it's the pale horse. Behold, a pale horse cometh, and you've heard it from the horse's mouth. The last part of the interview was with someone named um, Nicholas Shrek. Isn't that interesting? There was a movie called Shrek, a cartoon movie called Shrek. And they mentioned that they have their people in various different um, um, areas of, of society, in, in the various different areas of society. And it's important to understand those nine particular um, areas of society and human um, human relationship, you know. Um, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, um, Neely Fuller Jr. Um, talks about it and, and goes into a lot of details on it. So we'll recommend the ISIS papers, the key to the colors, to get a little bit more background on that. Now, we're looking at a document here, and um, it was interesting when they talk about controlling the mind when Shrek or, or the wolf or Wolverine spoke about, um, yeah, Wolverine, the X-Men. See, remember, they, they have people in the media, and if you look at the movies, they're talking about the rise of Satanism. The 90s were witnessed a rise of Satanism, so it's kind of obvious. We don't know the exact year of, this, of these interviews here. But it's kind of obvious that this must have taken place sometime in the 80s, at least. 
in the 80s. You know, they were projecting what is going to um, start to manifest because they're pushing their agenda. And you can see that they're very, you know, they're very clear on what they so-called be like Eve and, and, and what their agenda is, that they are the wolves and the people are the sheeple. And the wolves prey on the, on the sheeple. And they're seeking to recruit, and they have recruited certain individuals who share this evil spirit, basically this selfish spirit, this, this, carnal, this carnal mind and this adversarial mind or this um, oppositional mind or this satanistic um, mindset. So that, that goes across many, you know, many different um, groups and everything, you know. So don't look at the so-called Satanists just to be so-called white folks. But there's something very interesting that's also pointed out in this interview, which has um, Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan's Daughter, um, and this Nicholas uh, Shrek guy or Goy, um, speaking on what their whole agenda is. And he pointed out like this. They said, uh, first of all, is to go against um, Judeo-Christianity or Judeo-Christian values. And secondly, they're, they're speaking about um, reviving basically what we know as the mark of the beast or the Roman Empire or white supremacy. So what's really behind it is white supremacy. So even though a lot of these black artists and others, but mainly the lost sheep who are worshiping the golden calf right now, a lot of these black artists that bling bling and living the cash money life and, you know, promoting this so-called um, uh, lost lifestyle and, you know, in the bling of, in the bling of Babylon or spiritual Egypt, Although they may be profiting for a time, if they listen to the Satanistic agenda, the Satanistic agenda is about white supremacy, plain and simple. They'll use these fools, these lost sheep, these sheeple, you understand, who will come back into our community, though they are sheep, those lost sheep of the Beta Israel, they come back into our community, um, demoralizing the community with these Satanistic ideas in blackface and this is what we've been witnessing and what this particular um a documentary called the industry and many other documentaries and many other lecturers and teachers and and just other you know men and women out there whose eyes are opening up and who are recognizing and speaking up and putting out vids are speaking about so the revival of the roman empire now how does all this connect with the king of kings well it's very clear it, this, this, this is what makes it very, very clear. All this connects with the King of Kings because Haile Selassie represents the root and the truth of so-called Judeo-Christian values, represents the half of the story, Christ in his kingly character. And if we would look at the, the history, if we look at history, even the invasion of Ethiopia, Mussolini, Mussolini seeking to revive the Roman Empire, and Ethiopia was the intended sacrifice, as, as above, so below. So when we look at the, the witness in the stars, we see Andromeda, Andromeda who is chained to the rocks as to be a sacrifice to the serpent. Who is that serpent, that old dragon? What is the uh, papacy or Vatican's and the Pope's coat of arms? It's a dragon. So those who are familiar with that, with that mystery Babylon Roman aspect, this should be very, very clear. We're not going to go through all the information here concerning that background, the background narrative, because you need to know your history. You need to know history. You understand if you don't know what happened before, you're not going to really recognize and you're going to be totally confused to what's going on right now and what is to happen. But this particular video right here, as we've mentioned, basically speaks about the mark of the beast. 
that's not that it's a computer chip so much, but it's what you what do you image in your frontal lobe? What do you see in your mind's eye? In other words, is the image the image of God and Christ, of truth and rights? of the so-called Judeo-Christian values, or is it Satanistic? There's no really middle road. The middle road, those in the middle of the road get run over, basically. You have to, you have to choose. So what we're looking at when we see these so-called black hip-hop and, and entertainment artists and, and others um, sell their soul is Israel's or the lost sheep's false covenant. There is a false covenant. And we're looking at this document here from one of our um one of our brethren who have gone to sleep. Um and we pray that Jah has mercy on his soul. But some of y'all may know of this brother, Ika Ikael Tafari or Michael Tafari, Ikael Tafari, who wrote a document called The Voice of the Precept. The Voice of the Precept. And we have a copy here, and we want to just share a portion of this, a portion of this with you, because there's a couple of sections in this documentary, in this document, and it speaks first on Christ and his kingly character. It speaks on the abomination of desolation. It speaks on the revival of the Roman Empire. It speaks on the beast with the deadly wound. It speaks on Israel's false covenant. It speaks on the mark of the beast versus the covenant of life. It speaks on the golden, the golden candlesticks, or really it should be the golden lampstand or the menorah. And this is where this particular document written by Ikael um, concludes. Now, what we want to share with you first of all is this portion, this portion right here, right? This portion by Israel's false covenant. When we, when most people think about Israel or Israel, they think about the so-called Jews who call themselves Jews but who are not. They don't recognize the true black Jews or the Ethiopian Hebrews or the Beta Israel, the Falash, or the lost sheep in the Americas and the Caribbean as being God's true people. They don't recognize, and worst of all, the people themselves, the lost sheep, don't know themselves. So when we speak about Israel's false covenant, we're not talking about something going on over there in the so-called Middle East. You understand that is part of the seclorum delusion. But this world power is described in the book of Donnell as the main architect of a peace covenant between Israel and her enemies. And here they have Egypt and Rome. It's almost like right now these these artists and these entertainers and, and these so-called leaders who are selling their souls and all the prosperity pulpit pimps and the rest of them, you understand, who are causing people to worship the golden calf of bling bling and who are not telling the lost people who they really are so their eyes can be open and they can recognize the reality. But the confirming of this covenant is in fact the signal in biblical prophecy for the countdown of the last seven years. And we've been speaking about this in our videos, speaking on the menorah, speaking on even the 2012, that it's not so much that just that day is, is everything, but that day, it's like the beginning, the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning. Because Christ said that when you see these signs, and just today, there was a storm. You might have heard about it, um, March, uh, was the 2nd, March 3rd, and this past so-called week, the last six to seven days, there was a storm in the Midwest, and it, it affected seven states. It devastated seven states. And the storm came around again, and it took it took out a whole town. They say it, it just leveled an entire town. All of these are signs. There will be signs. Even Garvey said, "You see me in the whirlwind." You understand, reflecting part of God's prophecy. 
you know, as a kind of a John the Baptist type figure. And even the prophecy says, God says he's going to deal with his enemies. You know, and through these natural so-called disasters or through these signs in, in the elements and even with turning the earth upside down. I mean, literally. Now, so the confirming of this covenant, and we can see this covenant. In fact, this particular video, um, the industry exposed, as with a lot of other videos, especially with Whitney Houston's death and the whole murder, Illuminati conspiracy, and, and seeing that it's not just so-called evil white people, but it's lost sheep who have made a covenant with these so-called evil white people or Satanists who want to revive, basically, um, fascism and Nazism and, and white supremacy. That's what they mean by their so-called, their perversion of the new world order. But the confirming of this covenant is, in fact, the signal in biblical prophecy for the countdown of the last seven years of the Gentile world dominion. So when we talk about the end of the world, we're speaking about the end of this Gentile world dominion and the end of the present age, the end of this present cycle. As we know, 2007 is Ethiopia's um, new millennium, or what we know as the the Sementenya uh, Shi Ahmet, or the 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 eighth millennia or the eighth thousand years. That's very significant as well as uh September eleventh, that's Ethiopia New Year before the Illuminati even knew how to read or write the so called Illuminati and Freemasons in the Gentile world. But the last seven years of the Gentile world dominion and the end of the present age. So refer to the book of Daniel as the last of the seventy what's known as the seventy weeks. Now, careful examination of the history reveals that these, these weeks are seven years each, weeks of years. Now, in the Schofield edited version of the Holy Bible, he points out that these 70 weeks are divided into seven or 49 years, uh, 62, 300 and 434 years and one week, seven years. In the seven weeks, Jerusalem was to be rebuilt, quote, in troublous times, that the true Jerusalem is not that city over there, my people. The true Jerusalem is us as the lost sheep coming to our spiritual center. That's the true Jerusalem, and that this will be done in troublous times. This is why we're preparing now. This is why Torah studies, keeping the Sabbath, remembering the Sabbath. This is the time of preparation. This was fulfilled in part as Ezra and Nehemiah records, or the 62 weeks, which was 434 years, thereafter the Moshiach, or the Messiah, Jesus, was to come, Joshua. Now, this was fulfilled in the birth and the manifestation or the incarnation of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 26 is, the, is an indeterminate period when we look at verse 26 of this prophecy in Donnell. Now, the date of the crucifixion is not fixed. It is only said to be after the three score and two, or the 62 weeks. Now, the second event is the destruction of the city and the temple of Jerusalem, which was fulfilled in A.D. 70 by Emperor Titus, or Tito, of Rome, or of Rome. Now, black Hebrews, um, Israelites, and, and all the people of Jah, all the people of God who, who know themselves know that 70 A.D. is very important. 70 A.D. is very important. To, I'd like to go into this a little bit more, but 70 A.D. is where it w was the beginning of the end for us. But it also records, there's a, there's a Roman um, historian, uh, Tacitus, who records that the Jews 
after they had the Romans had had destroyed Jerusalem and took the and killed many and took many of the Jews into captivity. He records that the Jews are of the race of the Ethiopians, and 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 this is and this is historical evidence and 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 proof and fact. Now the white supremacists and the races at the higher levels they understand this, but they will not reveal this to you because they are Satanists, they are liars. Then to the end is a period not fixed, but which has already lasted nearly 2,000 years. That the end, when we look at Donnell's prophecy, when the part of the book is sealed up for an indeterminable amount of time, and even the Ethiopians are mentioned in a, a particular significance in that book as well. Now, the New Testament reveals that which was hidden from the Old Testament prophets, because there were certain parts of the prophecy that they saw happen. There were certain parts of the prophecy that they were expecting to happen, but there were certain parts of the prophecy that was not revealed to them, that was sealed up. That was the that was the Zaphon or the Zephon or the Sophon or the Typhoon or the mystery of God. That during this period should be accomplished the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and the gathering of the true church of the true church. Now, um, this is some historical background here, but it's, it's, it's really important to put this into its, its context because the seven-year the seven period of time is the time that December 21st, 2012, is that sign or is that signal for. So when we get to verse 27, what it shows here is that after the confirming of the covenant of peace for seven years during this same time, he or the beast shall break the covenant prophetically, Psalm 55 and 20 and 21, and he hath put forth his hand against such as be at peace with him. Perhaps Whitney could be a sign of that, Whitney Houston's Illuminati murder. He hath broken the covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. Then shall fulfill the abomination, Daniel chapter 12, verse 11, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Um, speaking about the man of perdition being revealed. And more and more, this evil um, Satanist agenda is being revealed, and we're beginning to see how the Satanists really have, over the last, we could say, 30 to 40 years, have actually um, changed, sought to change laws in time, have actually sought to change the reality just as, the Satanists in this particular um, particular video right here um, reveal. But just bear with me, my people. Bear with me right here. So the last three and a half years, so this breaking will happen somewhere at the middle point. It's interesting because there are many ones who are looking at the biblical prophecy and looking at some of the signs and the Biru, the heavens, um, even the Mayan, but comparing it with Scripture. And seeing that 2014, roughly, you know, seems to be a very significant um, time period, and that would be roughly the middle time within this seven years, beginning roughly, you, you, we can either look at it as 2011, because some of the same signs that are supposed to be prior to this so-called Mayan event, which is a, a, a shadow or an echo of what we have in the prophets of the Bible. The last three and a half years of this seven-year covenant period is identi identical to the Great Tribulation and the Hour of Temptation of Revelation 3 and 10. Now, it is my contention that if we uh, telescope all these prophecies, they will come to bear and focus on um, 
yes, September 5th, 1975, just seven days after the, quote, taking away of the daily sacrifice, Haile Selassie I, high priest after the order of Melchizedek, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 7, Daniel 12, 11. On that date, America, Egypt, and Israel confirmed the Sinai Covenant. The symbolism of the title Sinai Covenant is crucial, for it was on Mount Sinai that Jah first wedded Israel. It's a, it's, it's a wedding. You understand? This is a little bit aside, but it's still related to what we're speaking about here. If you check out one of the interviews when it seemed like Whitney and CD, or so-called Clive Davis demon, was getting together, Again, he says something, or he says something like, we're wedded, or, no, with, uh, with, um, with Jennifer Hudson. He's on the Piers Morgan show. There's that clip. So somebody can put, you know, get this video, put that in there, when um, CD says that they have a marriage. Now we have a marriage. So you have to understand, the, you know, this language. They have a so-called a white wedding as Billy Idol said, they have a white wedding. But we have to remember that when they used Sinai Covenant, that it was on Mount Sinai or Sinai that Jah first confirmed and wedded Israel as his people through the Ten Commands or the Commandment, the Ten Words, the Decalogue that was given to Musa. This is the true, that's the true Sinai Covenant or the true Sinai Covenant covenant. Now, thousands of years ago, um, there's a part in Isaiah here, I think it's 2814, had already warned us that um, in the last days, quote, scornful men that rule this people, which is in Jerusalem, would make their covenant with death and hell. This is why we see so many of these artists, these black so-called artists, you know, making this covenant, you understand, with death and hell, and the sign is the skull and the bones, which is another prophecy of the valley of the dry bones, because these people do not know who they are. They have rejected the true and living God and have made a covenant with skull and bones or with death and hell, so that when the overflowing scourge, some say World War Three or a Nibiru, a, a Nibiru a, a catastrophic incident shall pass through, it shall not come nigh to us. You know, some of these folks think, well, they're going to get away and they're going to be in some underground bunker or chamber somewhere, and you're going to be stuck in the projects. That's what they think is going to happen. They think they're insiders and y'all are outsiders. You're just the stupid fans that buy all the music, you know, and, and, and worship them as idols. Yet the prophets remind us that Jah had already laid in Zion, and we're speaking of the African Sion, for a foundation, a precious cornerstone cut without hands, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Moa on Bessazim and Negeda Yehuda. But all the days of his earthly reign, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, as the root of David, was ignored by the same scornful men who, who, who today, the youth, the artists, the pastors, the preachers, the majority of them are in bed with and have made a covenant with. Yet within one week of his being taken away from the sight of men, they found it in their power to make their covenant with Rome and Egypt. So we see a sign in the so-called revolution and in the creeping coup against his imperial majesty, against the line of Judah. Verse 18 tells us what they shall reap, quote, and your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. And when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, ye shall be trodden down by it. So most of these 
so-called artists and entertainers and the rest of these people who are in bed with skull and bones and the devil that you worship and everything, they think that their covenant is going to save them. But when the overflowing scourge, you understand, when judgments, when the, when, when the plagues shall pass through, they're going to be trodden down. They're going to be trampled like in one of those sneaker, you know, one of those sneaker um, incidents where everybody's rushing in, all the niggas to buy some, some um, retro Jordans. Isaiah twenty-eight fourteen to 18 is that verse right there just to document it. Then it, it clo this part closes by saying, now this covenant was confirmed, strengthened on March 26, 1979 by the hands of former U.S. President Jimmy Carter at Camp David, exactly three and one-half years described variously by Daniel as the end time and as, quote, time, times, and the dividing of time. So some might say, well, if that was so, that was already a past thing. But the scripture says, time, times, and the dividing of times. So there will be a time, a significant single zemin or incident. Then there will be times, you know, like that was the 70s. We had the 80s. Reagan comes on the scene. And now Reagan is very important in this. And this will we'll get back into this this video right here. Um, Reagan is very important because Reagan is the one who gave official license when he was governor of California to the so-called Church of Satan for the Church of Satan to become a recognized um, religious um, church and denomination, and, and and for them to even use. The word church, you have to think about it. And where is the kickback from so-called Christians? You, you know, so-called Christians say this country is a, a Christian country. Where's the kickback? They compromise themselves because they say, well, the well, the the um, Constitution says. Well, what does your Bible? What does your conscience say? So now we now come to our main point about the mark of the beast versus the covenant of life. So the Satanists represent that mark of the beast. And that mark of the beast, we'll say it once again, is not just a so-called uh, a piece of uh, um, um, technology in that sense. You understand? This is a spiritual mark in one's, in one's temporal lobe. You understand? And, and, and the seat of consciousness is called the temporal lobe. You understand? They're not going to put a, a chip so much in your forehead, but they'll put a thought in your mind. That is Satan's power. And for reference, documented the Kibbutz the Queen of Sheba, and her only son Minulik, chapter 100, confirms that Satan really has no power other than to put thoughts in the mind. And then when we now listen to these real world Satanists, they give us this very same confirmation of what the Bible says, what our Ethiopic documents like the Kibbutz and the Guest also reminds us of. So let us, let us be awake and let us be aware. There's a recluse who grants no interviews and makes no public pronouncements. The affairs of the Church of Satan are overseen by two people, his daughter, Zena LeVay, and Mr. Nicholas Shrek, founder of the Werewolf Order of Satanism. Zena LeVay and Nicholas Shrek are the chief spokespersons for the Church of Satan, and they are the two people you will see me confront during this video.